we need to talk. We need to talk about Alan Chan, aka the secret bully, aka the reason why you've been losing sleep over a video game, aka the guy who bullied you for at least three hours. And by the way, if you indeed get bullied for at least three hours, drop a like on this video. I want to see something. And if you actually defeated him within three tries, comment on this video so that we can all collectively call you a liar because there is no way i mean there is a way i mean if you know what to do you could do it but there is no denying that on your very first playthrough this guy is a beast he is the reason why you had to go online and type how to defeat Alan because he is really that tough fun fact you actually encounter this guy twice in the game the first time at the very beginning and we've all been lied to this is how i felt when i actually met Alan for the second time. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. I felt robbed. I felt lied to because there is no way this is the same person. But he actually is. This is the same person. But I should have known. I should have known that from the moment I didn't have a health bar and stamina bar or actually no bar at all, I should have known something was up. You encounter this guy at the beginning of the game and then later in the game provided actually met all the requirements to actually have access to the fight and i believe this is the first reason why this fight is so hard because well it is difficult to get there you need to beat every single secret boss on every single chapter which already takes a lot of time it is time consuming so yeah doing that will actually give you access to the fight and this is where the suffering begins I've heard about people not being able to defeat him for over a week. And honestly, I actually believe you. I absolutely do. Damn. So let's talk about why exactly he is so difficult. I think the number one thing people would say, which is probably very annoying about uh, this boss, is his shield. He has a shield, which is not there, by the way, the first time you encounter him. I wonder why. His shield is so obnoxious, because whenever it is active, it's going to reduce the damage you can deal to him, which is, you know, how a shield is supposed to work. You do have ways to actually counter that, especially if you have the fan, which is a vessel you can use to quickly um, get rid of the shield. You know, it's the best way to do so. But even if the shield is out, you only have 20 seconds. I think I counted 20 seconds for you to be able to deal as much damage as possible before he actually gets the shield back because yes, he, yes, he does. He can get the shield as many times as he wants <laughs> because why not? So the shield itself is a problem because again, it's going to reduce the damage you deal, but also he is most likely to not get staggered. But to be fair, it's not even like you can actively stagger this guy. He will most likely power through almost every single attack. But at least when the shield is down, he is going to respect even your light attacks and he will definitely respect your big heavy attacks. But when the shield is up, I don't think you are safe which is why it is in your best interest to get rid of this shield as soon as you can. He can also counter your attacks, block your attacks, and sometimes knock you back, you know, interrupting the flow of combat. He loves doing that. And, and speaking of interrupting the flow of combat, this boss actually has three phases. And while he's transitioning, he will have you just sit there nicely like a good little girl and watch him do whatever he's doing. And there is nothing you can do about it. I actually do hate that. I actually do hate that most of the bosses in this game have those phases where you just can't do anything besides just watch and wait for them to be over. And they can do that multiple times. And I don't feel like this is, uh, I don't know, great because again, I'm not doing anything. I'm just reacting to whatever you were doing. And I don't think I'm, I'm having fun. So I think that they should try to get away from those mechanics in the DLC because there will be bosses in the DLC. I really hope we don't have phases where we just stare at the boss for like 30 seconds doing nothing. But yeah, he has three phases. Phase one will occur after you deal a lot of damage in phase one. And phase one, I'll say, is the easiest one because then he doesn't go for multiple mix-up. And even if his shield is up, he will most likely not do anything 
out of the ordinary. In phase 2, however, he summons a gigantic axe and he can actually <laughs> make the axe tiny whenever he wants to. But this is where things get very difficult because he will do the most heinous and famous thing I've ever seen. He can go for, I'm, I kid you not, he can go for 20 seconds long combos. And this is not even an animation. It's, it's not even, he's not even transitioning into anything. No, he's just fighting. This is his base form. This is what he's doing. And if you are really unlucky, he will go for a 20 seconds long combo while the shade is down. I already told you, you have 20 seconds to punish him before the shield comes back. So by the time he is done with his lengthy combo, the shade is back. So you were unable to punish him because you were busy trying to survive. He does not respect you. He does not care. He will not stop attacking. And I don't understand what I did to actually piss him off that way. I don't, I'm not even the monkey he's, he got beef with. So why, why is bro so mad? That's crazy that he will go for the lengthy combos in phase two and it will not stop till the end of the fight. You know what I noticed? I may have fought Alan at least 200 times. And I'm going to tell you that if you're coming from Souls-like games, you know, if, you, if, if the last game you played is Elden Ring, you do not want to approach this fight as an Elden Ring fight. Let me explain. This guy can actually do the most heinous and famous thing I've seen a boss do in a very, very, very long time. He will mix you up. He will actually go out of his way to combine some strings just to confuse you. And believe me, he will confuse you. Out of those 200 times I actually faced him, I cannot tell you how many strings he has because whenever you feel like you get the hang of it, you actually downloaded him. He will do something random combine things and actually surprise you. That's the reason why I'm telling you that you should not try to actually anticipate and predict what he's about to do. No, this fight is mostly you actually reacting to what he is doing as opposed to trying to predict what you think he's going to do, which is crazy. Again, for the entirety of the fight, it's just you reacting in real time to whatever he's doing while trying to survive I was also trying to get the shield down, also trying to capitalize on the shield being down while he's doing the 30 seconds long combo. Are you, are you serious? Are you actually taking a piss? This has to be the biggest piss I've ever seen a boss take in a very long time. This guy is a menace. And guess what? He's not over, he's not even over yet. This is just phase two. He's combining things. He's using the axe. He's reducing the axe and slapping, slamming the ground. But here's the thing, when he slams the ground, you have to dodge the attack and the shock wave created by the attack. And unless you actually dodge pixel perfect, you know, perform a perfect dodge, you're going to get, you're going to avoid the axe and get hit by the shock wave. Okay, guess, guess what? It, it is a shock wave. It's going to move like a shock wave. You can actually get hit twice by the shock wave if you keep backing off. <laughs> This guy is crazy. And whenever the shield, I mean, whenever he has the axe in his hand, you need to be very careful because only a heavy attack with three focus bar, I think, three focus points can actually stop him because he will not stop. He will keep comboing you until he kills you. And you have to worry about the shockwave. Again, you have to dodge perfectly or almost, almost perfectly to avoid the attack and the shockwave. And he can do it whenever he wants. And when, depending on how or where you stand, what you're doing, you know, and how much health you deal, you dealt to him, he will change and mix up his attacks. That way he, you will never know what's coming. And that's the reason why I actually think you should not approach this fight like a souls like fight. Even two years from now, I'm pretty sure if I actually pick up Elden Ring again, I'll do just fine when it comes to Promise Concert Radan, because I know how he fights. I know my punish windows, I know when to strike and when I should just back off and wait. I don't know what to do against um, Alan Chen, I don't. I mean, I know what to do, but I don't know when to do it because he doesn't allow me to do anything. It's always his turn. If this guy was playing Uno, it will always be his turn. Turn one, he's, he says Uno and he wins. Turn two, Uno again. It's always, you never get to play. And when you do play, you die. <laughs> It's not 
your turn. It's not your game. The game is about him, not you. And I actually hate that. I mean, I love the boss fight. It's very challenging. But there's a fine line between fair and challenging. I think often that line is, I don't know, blurred. Because there is one mechanic I actually wished was in the game. is the poise break or stance break. I really wished some bosses would just allow you to deal some critical, like for, just for two or three seconds, allow me to deal some big damage, reward me for actually consistently applying pressure on the boss, instead of trying to punish me for doing that. Now we need to talk about phase three. Phase three again, we have this transition where he goes into the air, he is shooting beams, and then he's going to start throwing swords. And then there's, there's that one attack I really struggle with. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. At some point, he will go into the air. He will start throwing knives at you. And then at some point, he will throw knives continuously in a straight line. It's so fast. The timing always throws me off. Sometimes I'm able to actually react to it. And sometimes it's just a, like one half a second too early or too late and I'm dead because yeah he can one shot you and now he can mix you up he can punish you and good lord I feel like phase one and phase two if you play your cards right may actually just last two minutes if you play your cards right but then phase three may last four to six minutes depending on how you approach it because now again think about everything I said up until now the shield the fact that he can actually combo you non-stop for 20 to 30 seconds. The fact that now he can one-shot you. Phase 3 will last longer because the more health you take away from him, the longer his combo becomes and the harder it is to punish him. It's almost impossible to reliably punish him in Phase 3 unless you are willing to take some risk and you have to be very mindful when it comes to whenever you want to punish him because chances are the shield is always going to be active because he will not let you punish him whenever the shield is now. Oh, and I haven't even talked about the fact that he can reflect your immobilize back to you. It is possible to rely on immobilize for this fight, but you really need to be careful. If you miss the casting window, even by a second, you are in trouble because he will try to cast it back onto you and you need to be extra careful because whenever you are summoning your duplicates using a black of many they can use immobilize and they can try to immobilize him he will absorb it and immobilize all of you <laughs> i just i just this guy is nuts he is nuts and mind you mind you this is not everything he can do starting from phase two he will summon i mean he was awake he will awaken his third eye and while this is active for the remainder of the fight, by the way, he will gain the ability to dodge out of nowhere your heavy attacks, which is crazy. This is how you deal massive damage. So imagine you want to actually punish him while the shield is down. He can dodge your heavy attack, which now ex exposes you and well, your heavy attack is gone now. So what do you do? Well, you try to survive, build it again, only for him to dodge it again. <laughs> This guy is nuts. I think when Game Science was designing this boss and they were asked how many mechanics you actually want to give him, they were like, yes, yes, because he is so busted. He can transform. Whenever you transform, he will also transform. And whenever he hits you while being transformed, you automatically lose your transformation. Wow. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, and he's all he's intangible while transformed. He will transform into a tiger and you can actually you can't actually do anything while he's transformed. But whenever he hits you, you automatically get the transformed. But it's not even worth using a transformation in the first place because he's so fast you won't be able to do anything. You will not be able I mean you could try and deal some damage, but I I'm, I assure you that it won't matter. So he actually makes your transformation useless, not because he's making you detransform, but because he's so fast and his combos last so long that you won't have time to do anything, which is crazy. This guy is crazy. I'm trying to think about things I'm forgetting about him because honestly, he has so many moves he can do, so many things he can pull out of his ass when he feels like he's threatened. But he's always threatened, so he's always putting things out of his ass. I don't... I don't I love this fight. 
I really love this fight. I was able to defeat him without getting hit. I was able to defeat him using Spellbinder. I, I, I still can't tell you how many things he can do. <laughs> he can just he just goes with the flow. And I truly believe that this is the hardest boss we've had this year. But I do want to point out that this is going to be the case for your first playthrough essentially. Because for some reason, he gets increasingly harder, I mean easier, the more you play the game. I think it is due to the fact that he doesn't have that much health, you know? He doesn't have that much health and the shield only is the issue when it comes to dealing damage. So being able to, I'll say consistently, get rid of the shield is going to make this fight easier and you have everything you need after New Game Plus to deal with him. You have stronger weapons and being able to find a build which can replenish your chi and mana faster makes this fight, I'll say, slightly easier. And this is where things get very bizarre, like straight up awkward, weird. The Great Sage, the final boss you actually meet at the end of the game, which is like a very fair fight on your first playthrough, he becomes increasingly harder the more you finish the game. I don't know how to explain, it's just weird, like how am I struggling against a guy I defeated in one of two tries on my first playthrough? Like huh? What, what is going on? Anyway, I don't want to talk about the Great Sage today. If you do want me to talk about him, drop a like on this video and let me know. You know, speak with your thumbs. You know, click on everything on the screen and especially the subscribe button and the like button. But hey, this was indeed a fun fight. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Very soon. Unless you haven't beaten the boss yet. In which case, I think you should watch this video. And if you really want to know about the story of Wukong in general, Watch this other one. I'll see you soon. Peace.